Hi, this is a video in a series I'm doing on uh, retro computing. Um, I encourage you to start with the first video in the series as it will explain the, the platform that I chose to work with, uh, which was called the RC2014. Uh, basically a kit that I bought uh, from Tindy and then I started to implement some of my own modules for it. So in this video I'm going to describe a, uh, a bus monitoring module that I built. And here is a view of it, but let's start with the schematic. Uh, first of all, why would you want a bus monitoring module? Well, um, one of the nice things about retro computers is people like to put lots of lights and displays and things on them, so I figured uh, why not build a display that would show me at all times uh, what is on the address, data, and uh, control buses. And that's what we have here. So the display I'm using is called the TIL311. Uh, you can see them here on the board. There's six of them there. Uh, they're a fairly old but uh, still useful display that is uh, an LED. It's, it's a kind of a dot matrix LED and it's got a built-in uh, TTL driver. Uh, maybe I'll paste in the data sheet here for people to take a look at. And the nice thing about it is that we can feed um, four bits into it and it will display a hex digit of what those four bits are. So that seems like a perfect way to visualize our uh, address and data buses. So we'll see that I'm going to use a total of uh, four TIL311s for the uh, address bus and a total of two of them for the data bus that will allow us to visualize 16 bits of address, eight bits of data. So these TIL311s are TTL devices. They're not even the uh, the low power TTL devices. They're the the kind of old style power gobbling TTL devices. And I, that would complete if we actually hook those up to the Z80 uh, buses. That would completely uh, zonk out all of the uh, current that the Z80 is capable of sinking on its output uh, pins. Um, and we would be able to run no usable uh, peripherals. So obviously that isn't what we want, so what I've done is I've added a bunch of uh, buffers. I'm using 74 HCT uh, 244N chips, so we've got one, two, three, four uh, buffers up here. There's two buffers per chip. Each buffer is uh, four pins, so each chip gives us uh, eight, eight uh, lines of uh, buffered I.O. Um, so yeah, a total of three chips then. One chip for the first two uh, address digits, the next two address digits, and then finally one chip for the uh, the data digits. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. Uh, the next uh, thing over here is we should uh, we should look at how we latch the data. So, I mean, one thing you could do is you could just oops, you you could just display what's on the bus all the time. But I thought I'd try to do something a little bit more useful and and make it so that you could trigger it and display it when certain events happen. So I've taken the latch pin that hooks up to the digits and I've routed it over here to a, a header uh, that would allow me to select which one of these conditions is uh, triggered upon. Uh, one of the conditions is going to be just trigger all the time, so basically you get whatever's on the data bus. Um, the other conditions are each going to be tied to one of these uh, hex inverters over here. Uh, and These hex inverters are hooked up to M1 uh, memory request, IO request, read and write and then uh, we invert it again so when uh, when a signal goes active low into this it gets inverted comes out high on the header and then we invert that high back down to a low and use that to drive our latch input so that will allow us to cause these digits to either be active all the time or we could make it latch on M1 or we could make it latch on IO request or we could make it latch on reads or writes or memory requests uh, whatever we want. And then I also added another bank of uh, open collector um, inverters and use those to drive some LEDs so that we will be able to see whenever the uh, M1 signal comes on it will light an LED for M1 uh, then one for memory request, IO request, read, write, etc. Here is the bus monitoring board all assembled. So you see here are the uh, six uh, TIL311 displays, one, two, three, four for the address, and one and two for the data bus. We have a total of five LEDs for M1, memory request, IO request, uh, read and write. 
Here are the uh, buffers for the lines going to the display digits. So we've got two buffers for address pins and then one buffer over here for uh, the data bus. Over here we've got the uh, various hex inverters that are used to drive the LEDs and to buffer the control signals. And here is the dip switch that lets us select uh, what the trigger condition will be for the TIL-311. I've installed the bus monitoring board in the first slot in the back plane. You can see the six TIL-311 uh, hex displays here. These uh, four on this side are for the address bus. These two are for the uh, data bus. So the LEDs from the bottom are M1, memory read, I.O. read, uh, read and write. Right now we're just displaying whatever is on the bus as it is uh, running the, uh, the basic interpreter. So we can see from these LEDs that there's, there's a lot going on. We're running at full bus speed so we can't really see what's happening. We can see M1 is lit up a lot and memory read is lit up a lot and uh, reads and writes are lit up. So that's, it's fetching instructions, it's running stuff in basic, it's writing stuff back to memory. Um, if we want to just look at IOs, we can flip this dip switch, flip this one off, flip that one on, now we're looking at IOs, and we can type in and run a uh, simple basic program over here. Oops. Let's plug the UART back in. So we can run a simple basic program over here. Let's do 10 print. So you're seeing, uh, you're seeing the IOs. We're looking at port 81. That's one of the UART ports. So you're seeing the IO um, as I'm typing keys on the keyboard. Hello world 20. So I'm just run a program that prints hello world so we can see it's uh, printing very fast. Um, uh, you'll notice the, the upper 8 bits of the address seem to be the same as the data bus. I'm not sure exactly why that is though I did look at the Z80 instruction set and one of the uh, one of the input instructions does put the accumulator on the top eight address bits. So that could be why we're seeing uh, weird stuff up there in the top eight address bits. I don't know why they did it that way, but presumably they, they had their reasons. So if I write a simple program here, um, I'm going to read from input port HC0. Go to 10. Oops, syntax error. And HC0. So we'll type run. So right now we're reading from port C0. And C0 happens to be where the uh, real-time clock is located. Um, so I'm just continuously reading the seconds digit of the real-time clock. And you can see that these reads coming off of... Uh, C0 are the seconds digit. So our real-time clock is working as expected. Um, let's see what else we can show. Can we see? I bet if we try to watch memory fetch accesses, yeah, if we try to watch the uh, instruction pointer, it's just going to uh, go too fast. So let's uh, halt that basic program. We can see we're looking at the UART back again. Um, so one of the things about this, if you're running fast like this, you can't see a whole lot. For example, if I turn this over here to look at the M1, which should be the instruction fetches, uh, we can't see a whole lot. I can kind of see there's a 7 there, so a lot of stuff is happening around address 70 hex, but you know it's running at 7 megahertz, so I can't see a whole lot, but I do happen to have a module in here, uh, which we will discuss in a future video, that will let me slow the clock down. So there, I've slowed the clock down to uh, a one second uh, clock frequency, so approximately one hertz. So every time we see the bottom light turn on, that'll be an M1. So there was an M1, it was at address 77. 
then we M1 did address 78, 79, 7A. As you can see it's uh, loading instructions and executing them. 74, 75, Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sandrail stuff. Bye.